Hi there, um, Kate. Welcome to our Facebook Live uh, with myself and Jenny's hands is what we normally see on our live <laughs> and some amazing, beautiful rainbow coloured food that we've got here in front of us which Jenny's going to prepare. We've had a couple of really hot days so um, no cooking involved today which is amazing and this is all local food, um, well the majority is all locally grown sourced food from your good self. Mm. So, uh, Kate I'm just going to get you to introduce yourself to um, to our audience because um would just like to know a little bit about you and uh, what you're doing at the moment. I find it really interesting, but if you'd like to share it with us. Yeah, sure. Um, so we are farming a small market garden. It's on one acre of actual market garden, growing lots of different mixed fruit and vegetables. Uh, it's in Ringwood. Um, and we only just started it properly in December um, but already we are cropping a whole variety and we are doing a CSA model so community supported agriculture so we've got veg box going out to the local residents we're also selling in a local farm shop and um, a couple of restaurants are taking bits from us as well so it's a kind of yeah it's it's a uh, trying to make a whole local no chemical food more accessible to people um the the major focus is on on local and people being able to come and, and see the farm and even volunteer at the farm as well absolutely that's amazing that's absolutely brilliant thank you for sharing that so before i ask you lots of questions i've got so much i want to ask you i'm just <laughs> going to share with you that jenny's going to be doing um prepping some food for us because i always have to remember we are here for the food as well which i'm very jealous because i can't then taste it afterwards whereas jenny gets to try it so i, I probably just need to move a bit closer so <laughs> jenny's going to start with um three dishes tonight she's going to start with your butter bean hummus isn't that interesting so yeah i, I can't wait to see what that's going to turn out like bruschetta which is a favorite of mine and also cucumber courgette and pea salad which is sounds really interesting see what that's going to be like as well so yeah i get hungry every time we do this because it all <laughs> way sounds fabulous so your um so yeah with the hummus we're going to have butter butternut be um butter beans tahini lemon juice clove of garlic some cumin some um juice from the tin and some olive oil so Jenny's going to pop that all together and whiz that so that should shouldn't take too long we say that and we end up buying packets which sounds crazy doesn't it why why is our fresh food all covered in plastic to then throw the plastic in waste to then have the fresh food it makes no sense at all mm -hmm. so what you're doing today I you know what you've been doing is, is actually brilliant because it's another way of reducing our plastic waste yeah now, I'll I also, from what you're saying, I feel that um, what you're doing is a great way of people connecting to what they're eating, because I feel we're so disconnected. Is that how you feel? Yeah, that's 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 been a massive thing for us. Yeah, we, we basically, that was kind of the whole catalyst was I was a chef in London um, for like 12 years. Um, and I realised like, I, I didn't know even as a chef at the beginning about a lot of provenance of food really knowing where something's come from yeah. um and also just seeing I previous to that I'd worked in schools with um with in primary age children and absolutely no there's it doesn't seem to feature on the curriculum like kids don't know what how vegetables look in the ground a lot of adults don't even know um no. yeah we just really wanted to connect people to the land again like give them give them that experience give them the opportunity to feel and taste things that have just come out of the ground um and also experience it as a really beautiful space as well like we really we really yeah. try and make it really fill, fill the farm with flowers also and you know it's really great for all the pollinators um which we really need to support as well these these days uh but it's also yeah trying to make it like a whole experience um so that people can really enjoy and see the joy again because we've just it's just become fuel a lot of the time it's something it's a, it has to be convenient and like you say everything comes in plastic because that's convenient but mm. actually we're losing 
we're losing all the nutrient value you know that the way that things are grown mm -hmm. they're not some things aren't grown in soil things are harvested before they're ripe things are grown with all these chemical pesticides and herbicides mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't really think about that or realize that um and without healthy soil we cannot have good nutrient dense vegetables or fruit we just can't like it's a really key factor our soil is so so important and yeah. we really want to educate people about that and and let them they'll do notice it in the taste of the vegetables like healthy yeah. vegetables yeah. are much sweeter they just are yeah yeah, um, yeah. so it's just yeah trying to trying to kind of tie all those things together but also make mm. uh, make it appealing you know it's got to be yeah got to be an enjoyable experience it's not just sort of lecturing people <laughs> oh, absolutely you've got to bring people along the journey and and mm -hmm. sometimes you think you know when we say it's convenient convenient for who you know um is that a, a story we've been sold that you know it's yeah. convenient just go to you know your local supermarket pick up everything up in one go now I'm, I'm probably a lot older than you Kate and I remember when we used to get the green grocers would come round and mum would buy it off the back of um, mm -hmm. vans that would come and she'd get all of her groceries from there and yeah. um, you know and mum didn't wasn't able to get the vegetables that she was used to cooking um when in india so she mm -hmm. would customize with you know making curries with carrots and potatoes and you know she was able to utilize what was coming and you know and we were we were okay with that mm. but then all of a sudden you know our markets have changed and you're getting fruit and veg from all over the world which you know um we you know demand has demand been the issue you know have we created that demand or has marketing created a demand you know I don't believe at any point one was unhappy but obviously then if she could get sort of Asian food she would use it because that's what she knew yeah but if she hadn't had that I don't think it would have been the end of the world either do you know what I mean mm -hmm. so yeah I think there's something in being connected and uh, I have to say this is the first year I'm not green fingered at all but my partner has got me this year, first time ever in my life, I'm growing tomatoes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Cucumbers, peppers, uh, rhubarb, mm -hmm. and I've got some um, a, a squash grown as well. And Brilliant. I am so, so excited and some strawberries. And it's just, I totally agree with you. The flavours are different. My, mm -hmm. Most of the veg, I mean, I have got no red tomatoes yet. I'm very envious. They're all green. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping they're going to come along. Yeah, they but will. What, <laughs> what I have noticed, uh, and Kate, I don't know if you agree with me, is that all of a sudden I'm seeing butterflies in my garden mm -hmm. for the first time oh, yeah. in I don't know how long. That's, and you are seeing bees and you're seeing, you know, much more um creatures in your garden that I never mm. used to see before which are you know obviously enjoying <laughs> the veg in the garden as well and it's just like wow such a simple act of growing some of your own vegetables or being part of a, a group CSA group which you know I'm going to see if we've got any local to me here in Warwick um, sounds like such a great idea yeah no it really is it's lovely to hear that because that's that's a huge thing we don't just want to you know we can't provide all the food for the local area we, we're not big enough to do that but we would love to encourage more people to grow their own or more market gardens to open up in this in around every town you know so that we yeah. can start to actually be providing a lot more of what goes into people's diets yeah. because it, it, it you are right I mean it's what have we been sold like this convenience dream or whatever it is or capitalism yeah. or you know it's all yeah. faster quicker but but there is a cost and it might not be the cost that you pay with your wallet it can be yeah. the cost of the environment it can be the cost to the people who the labor involved or yeah. and to, you know, to the, your health yeah yeah and to exactly to your health is a, is a huge yeah. thing and I think more and more people are starting to think like something's up something's not right yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. It, it, I'm going to stop you for one minute Kate because Jenny's cutting up um she's making the bruschetta and what I wanted to share was the different types of tomatoes yeah. so you know you go to the supermarket and it's all so uniform I mean look when I first saw the the yellow coloured veg I was like well what is it and you want yeah. a tomato and I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> which 
obviously makes a lot of sense now, but look how different. And, and that is normal, but we don't see that as normal. And, and I think that's something lovely that you've brought to the table today. Now, Jenny has picked these fresh from your farm today, I believe, literally. Yeah. yeah. M- hours ago a couple of hours ago and that oh, yeah. you can't get fresher yeah. than that can you I mean look yeah. at that juicy Amazing colors juicy. Yeah. oh wow they really are so so much more delicious and that's the thing like you know you're growing your own and you'll notice the flavor of your tomatoes being like especially when they're warm off the vine like the heat of the sun and (laughs) oh they just ripen and the sugars in them are just they're unreal um yeah but also it's the fact that then yeah like you say like you can you can choose all these different amazing varieties that you'd never ever get in a supermarket like you just they, they stick to the same bland stuff that and they pick it like I said already, like they pick it so that it's it holds its shape or whatever, but it's not ripe. It's not got to its full potential. It's not got what you need, like as a yeah, human, yeah, <laughs> what yeah. you actually need out of it. But, um, yeah, it's cool seeing the colours of that, it's so pretty. Mm-hmm. I think that one's called Dad's Sunset. <laughs> no way, that's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. So my mum, mum was brought upon a farm, and the first thing she says is that vegetables taste so different in the mm. supermarket to a farm, and she just says there's just no nothing at all similar. And I went to India, but it was probably about eighteen years ago. I'm going to go this year, so I don't go often. And when I was out there, um, the family just took the carrots they were like almost like red colored carrots out of the ground and made a curry with it and it was the sweetest oh yeah curry I'd ever tasted I couldn't believe it was with carrots because they don't taste the same in supermarkets no matter no. So no, no wonder we're not big fans but I'm sure if we were to come and get vegetables from yourself we're more likely to eat them because they taste better (laughs) yeah definitely and 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 another thing on that like I mentioned briefly about soil like that is a huge factor in in the flavor and where we've taken on this um piece of conventionally farmed land like we've taken a strip off an existing field which has been plowed for many years so that's yeah. releasing a lot of carbon and it's killing a lot of the mic the mic beneficial microbes that would be in the soil and there's right. a thing called the soil food web which is basically the the underground ecology um, okay and that is what that is when that is working as it should it helps the plants reach the nutrients and minerals that are in the soil right. so when you put on chemical fertilizers you're it's almost like giving a plant junk food like it fills it up but then it doesn't have to release the same exudates that then would attract all those microbes so it doesn't actually then end up picking up all those different minerals um and nutrients that we should have in the food so the the conventional way of farming with plowing and these big monoculture crops you're you're killing you're, you're working with dead soil so the food that we get is just it has to they have to feed it with these chemicals because there's no life in that soil um again mm-hmm. the pesticides and and then it just means that we're not th- those vegetables will never taste like they should like and, they should yeah. yeah and we're not getting we're not getting those nutrients like we should so for us yeah we feel like we're you know we're really trying to repair that soil and we're working on that but it, it will improve year after year you know as we build yeah, more cool, soil, cool. We, yeah. you know, repair it, the the food should just start to taste better and better and better yeah. <laughs> which is pretty Talk, exciting absolutely we're talking of food jenny's just put together the bruschetta and i just want to go through what's in there so that oh, yeah. uh, if anyone else wants to make it so there's 500 grams of tomatoes two spring onions two cloves of garlic, 40 millilitres of balsamic vinegar and 50 millilitres of olive oil and half a bunch of um, basil. So I think Jenny's putting um, the butter butter bean hummus on, topping it with the bruschetta. (laughs) Put my teeth back in. (laughs) <laughs> I know, I know. You see, I'm very jealous because then Jenny gets sweetness later. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to worry about tea. Look oh, at yeah. that. That looks yummy, so yummy. Nice. 
<laughs> oh, all, all from your garden How yeah is that? <laughs> but it's so cool because like that took minutes you know that's so yeah. easy and again that wasn't like you were saying it's too hot to cook there wasn't actually cooking involved and yet yeah. you know you've got something really delicious and yeah, yeah. nutritious and, <laughs> and nutritious absolutely you're not denied and and when you do we do eat um nutritious deficit food you never really fill up do you so you'll, so you'll eat but you never really feel you've you've had your food. Now, Kate, you were telling me about these the vegetables we've got here in front of us. And again, mm. it's not what you see in supermarkets. So even in the supermarket, you're separated from your food. So Jenny's going to put together a cucumber courgette and pea salad. Uh, and that includes two to three courgettes, three tablespoons of olive oil, a few sprigs of mint, a garlic clove, a cucumber, and peas uh so yeah so tell me what we've got on here <laughs> okay so that is a cucumber at the bottom there or the big one wow um, even wow. though it looks like it so that is called an early fortune cucumber and actually we didn't there weren't any because i harvested a load this morning but you can see i mean they're so so juicy and so crisp and full of flavor they're they really are amazing um wow. But there are so many different varieties of cucumbers and all you ever see in a supermarket is the long green one, yeah. which isn't always that delicious. Like these ones yeah. can have a, on some of these, you might you might want choose to peel the skin because it's a bit tougher. But what it's doing is holding in all that crisp and like juiciness and sweetness. Yeah. Like they yeah. are quite, quite different and very delicious. But we've actually got one called lemon cuke which looks like okay. it grows and it looks like a lemon it actually yeah. has the shape of a lemon and then one called an apple green and that's like a little you know apple looks like an apple as well. oh. we've got like four different varieties of cucumber at the moment and then these are the courgettes oh. so yeah oh, apparently wow. people say whatever the phytochemical that makes courgettes yellow apparently yeah. makes them more delicious so yeah okay. i've yeah. been i don't know i think they all taste good but apparently yeah. some people say that the yellow ones are tastier <laughs> yeah. I, I guess it's a bit like peppers or you know some the, the red peppers are a sweeter pepper yeah the yellow one has a slightly different taste as the yeah. green has a different taste so i guess it's similar and, and it is again almost educating ourselves about food uh, which we're not very you know we haven't been brought up it's not something you're taught at school um I think the majority you know we were taught to make an upside down cake at school <laughs> it was just <laughs> yeah not a lot and I believe over the years kitchens were taken out of schools yeah so home ed stopped being a thing which is really sad you know they stopped, um, so that you know kids were getting sandwiches for their lunch which really is is really sad isn't it it's just it like is. really and then yeah. we end up being a sandwich society, don't we? And it's like actually, there's more, there is more to our food than totally. Than and I think that, that's what's great, like what you guys are doing, like, and that's what we want to do, especially is like I always saw this is we weren't just going to grow the food there. We want to have like an outdoor kitchen, and we want to be able to host sort of workshops or you know Absolutely. be able to do things with with kids from schools so that they can come and pick the vegetable and then make something with it and taste it and yeah. learn these skills again because I think they are you, you there's no point in growing all your own veg and then not knowing what to do with it Absolutely. and equally like you know you're saying it if we want to change how how we're kind of working as a society and slowing down a bit and taking time out to make something and obviously people have busy lives but actually maybe one of the focuses of our day needs to be at least one meal where we slow down and absolutely talk to somebody and and appreciate it or even if you're not talking to somebody like appreciate what you're putting in your body and 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 give that a moment because we well, our bodies deserve that like we need yeah. that how we yeah. stay healthy it's it you know there's so much chronic pain and inflammation and disease in later life and yeah. it's 100 percent linked to our diet like you know yeah. it's our lives and our lifestyle and levels of stress you know yeah yeah absolutely um, we we totally um agree with you kate myself and jenny and then that's the reason why we set up booty fuel is that people are so dissociated with their food but also how to cook plant-based was our biggest thing is that people love 
food and you know they, they want to cook more plant-based they just don't know how to absolutely and they don't yeah. and they've been brought up with there's got to be a piece of meat some veg and potatoes on the plate and if there isn't we don't know what we're doing or you know yeah. we've, been, we've been taught about pizza that's got cheese on it and only if you've got cheese on it is it worth eating yeah so it's it's getting people like like you're saying to reconnect with food and know that it can actually be gorgeous food i mean look at that salad you've yeah, never put nice. that combination together but with the sweetness that you're saying that you get in your courgettes and in your cucumbers that have come straight from the ground you, you actually have a really nice salad in front of you just by combining some of these foods together and yeah, you know so hopefully we're wetting appetites and you know, <laughs> if, if, if you want us to come and support you um we we'll certainly will come and support what you're doing with it what you're doing is fantastic um and and so how long have has uh, four acres farm been there and i believe you've got four acres and you're doing different things with each part is that correct yeah so we've been on there sort of properly since december like making the beds we're making no dig so we don't dig the soil we build our beds we've done it all by hand with wheelbarrows and lovely volunteers um (laughs) and so one acre is yes the market garden and we've got a polytunnel on that as well and then um we have um a a mixed fruit orchard so we've planted a new orchard over for an acre and actually just a bit over an acre and then we've got two acres at the minute which is wildflower meadow which is for all those butterflies you're saying all those butterflies and pollinators but we've actually planted a brand new um hedgerow along the edges as well so that's you know eventually as it grows up it will it will help with sort of wind protection and um but it's it's mainly you know it's 13 different species of of native um yeah. of trees that will provide you know food and shelter and you know they 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 call um they call hedgerows like a like wildlife corridors they're the corridors or oh. highways you know they're the species most species cannot just stay like in one no. place they need to be able to travel through and for safe yeah. tra- travel they need yeah. hedgerows and we've lost so many hedgerows unfortunately yeah. Yeah. and not yeah. to you know keep banging the drum but to come you know we're using big machinery and the way that big agriculture has gone means mm. that people were clearing hedgerows to be able to yeah. get bigger machines through and yeah it's it's had a huge detrimental effect on our countryside unfortunately yeah. and and we are you know really blessed in Ringwood to have a lot of people with race who um are really trying to restore as much hedgerow and, and join join them all up and yeah just make these things Absolutely. and a lot of them are edible you know there's things that you can forage yeah. there's elderberries and hazelnuts and wow. um you know there's 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 all sorts of things that yeah we there's want multiple it. benefits to having the hedgerow back isn't yeah, it? yeah it's fantastic yeah. well so, just going to show you the food jenny's made tonight so she's created three things there for you the the butter bean hummus the bruschetta uh, and the cucumber courgette pea salad now who wouldn't want that today on a day like today it's perfect isn't it really but what i what i would like to do is give you an opportunity and, and she's made it so quickly that's <laughs> crazy <I'd like> that. <laughs> so I'd like to um ask you is there anything um we could do to help or anyone listening who is either listening live or on playback can help you Kate in in yeah. Ringwood so we are we have a website which is www4 acrefarm um yeah. so there's details on there if they want anyone wants to come and volunteer or donate because we are a community interest company so all our profits goes back into you know helping us restore that land and and we want to be able to yeah host free workshops for people and to be able to um yeah support eventually we'd love to be able to employ somebody and that you really believe in like getting skills real skills to people that they are that are transferable and that can help them with their employment as well um so yeah just on that or we're on instagram as four acre farm csa so yeah that's where people can 
get in touch if they're interested <laughs> come and find you perfect we'll do that definitely and again if anyone listening today wants uh, more confidence in cooking uh, we have a free download which is um, meat free mondays it is plant-based uh, you can download that off our website www.rootofyour.com uh, and and it is a lot of it is locally produced food so it's just getting people back into the kitchen cooking and actually having fun with food um and having that confidence and i think that's the thing people lose that confidence so ordering mm. online is much easier or off an app than seeing what you've got in your fridge and, and having the confidence of creating something which has always been my sort of my space so very lucky to have a friend like jenny who is very mm. confident and has taught me so much about cooking uh, and sharing so many skills so Kate, I look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, and yeah, if I do get to see you this weekend, uh, I can't wait. It'd be lovely to yeah. meet you and yeah. see yeah. the work yeah. you're doing. We'll definitely be sharing it on our socials as well. If you are happy to, uh, after this uh, live, if you are happy to share underneath your um, farm, if Jenny hasn't already, that would be great. Now, we've got a couple of questions, I think. Um, we've got, um, let's have a look. Uh, cucumber varieties outdoors or poly to, um like the sound of cucumbers varieties outdoor or polytunnels how do you grow yours uh so we've got a mix we've got some in the polytunnel and we've got a uh, market more outside and we've actually put some of the lemon cukes outside because we've got quite a hot summer uh last year i did market moors outside and I couldn't keep up with them <laughs> it was quite a wet <laughs> summer in the end and obviously a lot of people got tomato blight but uh the cucumbers absolutely loved it they are pretty thirsty okay. I must say yeah but okay. indoors so outside we let them just sort of trail out along and indoors yeah. we climb them up uh wires okay. so yeah okay. right so I you've inspired me I'm going to take some do a little story of my garden and show it you yeah. <laughs> on my on our Instagram the little <laughs> things that I've grown uh, but don't judge me <laughs> it's Not very cool. hard no it's wonderful it's so good yeah. oh, well thank you so much for today uh, really appreciate it um questions there if you can share I think uh, we've shared your um your website on on our underneath here so that people can see that on our live but again, thank you, Kate, and oh, really look forward you. to seeing you soon. Great. All right. right. Cheers then. Bye. Bye-bye.